Okay, today I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade a stock Simi CNC hot end with a new nozzle, a 40 watt heater cartridge, and a threaded thermistor. Um, the first thing you'll need, of course, is the stock Simi CNC hot end. I'm just going to start calling them SMC from now on, it's a lot easier. <laughs> anyway, I've already taken the old nozzle out of this. Um, this is what the old nozzle looks like. Uh, for those of you that are not getting current shipping uh, kit, you'll probably have gotten one of these if it's uh, older than about the middle of August 2013. This is what the new nozzle looks like, and you can see in comparison, they're quite a bit different. Uh, the benefit to the new nozzle, it's got a much shorter heat zone, or melt zone to it. Um, it helps retract and it doesn't heat soak as the uh, PLA so much if you're running PLA and it's got a better tip on it uh, for the nozzle. This is a 0.5 millimeter uh, orifice on the nozzle so that's what we'll be using. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is the threaded thermistor. Uh, I got this along with the heater cartridge on eBay for about $12. It's essentially a 100k thermistor that's been JB welded into a 3 millimeter uh, male, female, brass standoff. Uh, really nice little setup. The next part is, as we roll stuff around here, uh, the 40 watt heater cartridge. We're going we're gonna to trim most of this off. We'll cut that right about there when we get to that point. And then you're going to need something to uh, drill the hole with, or to, to bore it out. Uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to install the threaded thermistor into the original hole that the uh, thermistor used to go into. You get a number 39 drill bit and put a piece of tape on it at the same depth as the threads here. There, hot end just rolls everywhere. And then go ahead and drill that and make sure you don't go any deeper than your tape mark. Okay. You're n next, you're going to need a tap. This is a uh, uh, three millimeter by 0.5 thread tap. This is what you'll use to tap the hot end. Whoops, where's the hole? There it is, uh, for the thermistor. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do right now is go ahead and, and I'm gonna do that here real quick. You also need a connector for the uh, hot end. I use these XT60 connectors for mine. Um, there's no reason you couldn't use a different connector. It's entirely up to you. Uh, you could even solder it directly to the power wires to the hot end. Uh, it's your choice. I like to use these. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill the uh, hot end out and I'm going to get it tapped and I'll be right back. Okay now we've got the hot end threaded and the thermistor installed. The next step is we need to prep some tape to hold this whole thing together. This is the stuff that I use. Uh, it's good to 500C, I think, but we're only going to use half of it, or half a, a, a width here, okay? And the stuff that I have has got this nice line around it, okay? So what I'm going to do is cut some of this off. And it adheres, it, it adheres to itself. So, but because we don't need this whole width, we only need half of that. I'll go ahead and I'll get that cut in half here. And you don't want to nick it because as it heats, it contracts. And if you have the beginnings of a tear in the material, it will come apart on you. Uh, the first hot end that I did this to, uh, I found that out, and uh, I had to uh, to pull the material off and reapply it. Okay, so we've got our basic wrap here. The, again, this is a, a silicone high temperature wrap, and it adheres to itself. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, prep the uh, heater cartridge uh, to be able to fit inside the hot end. And to do that, we need 
a little bit of aluminum foil to increase the diameter of the cartridge so it will properly fit inside the head and won't rattle around too much. We don't need that much because it's real close already. Let me get set up for that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip these wires right about here because that's probably more than we'll never need. Okay, so what I have here is I've got my XT60 connector, a couple of pieces of heat shrink tubing, my heating cartridge, and the thing that lets me solder without losing my mind. So what we're going to head and do is put the uh, heat shrink over the wires, because what we want to do is protect the, uh, the cups on the XT60 connector. We want to get these way away from where we're going to be soldering so it doesn't solder early or so it doesn't shrink early. And you can see we cut just the right length that fit in there. Okay. Polarity doesn't matter. This is a resistor. Essentially it doesn't care what the polarity is. So we'll go ahead and set it up. And when you set it up in here if you can grab one of the gold contacts that you're working on it'll help act as a heat sink and keep some, keep some of that heat out of uh, the connector body which while it is high temp it will eventually fail if you give it too much heat and sometimes it takes a while to get these going because there's a lot of thermal mass we have to come in to overcome I would recommend using a, a 40 watt soldering iron for this because uh, it'll just make your life a little bit easier. This will be interesting because I'm doing this around the camera and it's kind of hard for me to see. So we'll tin that up a little bit to get some solder on there and get it to heat up a little bit and it should start flowing here any second. There we go. Come on, here we go. Yes, talking to it does help. Solder joints like to be talked to. They work better if they're happy. Didn't you know that? See, today you learned something new. Okay, and we'll just let that cure, or cure, let it cool. Pretend you didn't just see me blow on that. And let's go over here and switch to, ooh, that is really posty, really toasty. Okay, now let's go over to this one and we'll do the same thing over on this other side. That's not good. Make sure you don't have any stray pieces of wire hanging out of there. That would ruin your day. Because it could short against something else and cause all kinds of havoc that, trust me, you don't want to deal with. Okay, so. Turn that up just a little bit to help the heat spread in there. See how nice and fast that works? You don't get a cheap junk soldering iron. You get a good one. And it makes jobs like this a lot easier. And we'll let that cool. And I'm gonna give that a couple, or I'm gonna give that a minute or so to cool, and then I will get the heat shrink applied to it, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got the soldering done. The heat shrink is shrunk. And we have a very nice looking little assembly here. Okay, so what we need to do now is get the aluminum foil wrapped around the heater cartridge so it'll fit. And you want to do it in the middle of the heater cartridge and do a piece that's about, I don't know, half inch, maybe five sixteenths, a little bit a little larger. Doesn't need to be much because their contact point is pretty much the center of the uh, heater cartridge here. Now we'll test fit that and go ahead and do it on the opposite side. Well, it looks like I need a little bit more so I'm going to go cut a little bit more of that and I will be right back. 
Okay, I got a little bit more. No, we don't want that to slide out of there. It's real tight as it is. Come on. You'll learn that I talk to inanimate objects a lot. I find that they work harder for me. But then again, I just mean get crazy. But that's up to you guys. And we wrap. And we wrap. And we make a mess of it, don't we? You know it's getting bad when I'm using the Royal Wii, huh? Okay, we're not after perfection here. We just need it to be a snug, a snug fit. And that is way, way too much. And that's all used up. More tin foil. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that it worked the first time. And I just didn't spend the last 10 minutes cursing and hollering at this thing because it wasn't going to work right. Okay, so. We've got our heater cartridge in there. We've got our heating element in there and let's go ahead and get this thing wrapped and I don't know how easy this is going to be to do on camera but hopefully I won't screw it up too badly the idea being is that we're gonna and you pull it tight as you do it because what we're doing is we're creating basically an adhesive band to hold this whole thing in place and it'll also act as a heater block insulator because it won't allow air from a cooling fan to reach the sides of the heater block and go ahead and do what I'm doing and just go over under we'll always go over the top of the thermistor but we'll alternate over under on this and then when you get to the other end you just tamp it down and hold it in place and you can see it doesn't go anywhere and we got a little bit low here but that should be okay and there you have it that's just about ready to go the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is get the uh, nozzle installed and that means we're going to take our little uh, PTFE liner. You can't call it a Teflon liner because I think it's Dow Chemical gets all butthurt over it because they don't get their little dime when you say the word Teflon. So we'll put the PTFE liner in here and get that threaded in there. And of course the wrench I need to tighten this up is not handy, is it? Well, of course not. One moment. I guess right the first time I did guess right the first time okay so go ahead and we tighten that up and I mean you don't want it monster tight but tight enough that you know it's not going to go anywhere okay the next thing we need to do is kind of neaten up this wiring a little bit okay one of the things that I like to do when I'm finishing a hot end build is I like to uh, put a piece of uh, capped on tape on this joint here and that way heating and cooling cycles won't loosen it up so get your roll of, of half inch capped on and you do have half inch capped on don't you if you don't you need some this is a miracle tape it works on just about everything except when you need scissors
Okay, that was dumb. I may or may not edit that out. We'll see. I'm not exactly... Uh, the TV guy that sells junk. What do they call those? Pitchmen? I'm more of a pitch a pitch a fit man than a pitch man. Okay, you don't need much. And just put it on that joint like that. And there you go. And that will keep that from loosening up over time. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do it to the thermistor here. And the reason being is that we don't want anything to damage that thermistor. And most of the damage that happens is because the wiring gets too tight and pulls on it. And when that happens, the thermistor and even this one could be uh, torn from the hot end and once that happens you're going to lose a hot end because the firmware doesn't know that the hot end is popped out or that the thermistor is popped out so it's going to increase power to that heater cartridge to try to get that temperature back up and all that's going to do is burn up your hot end because this 40 watt cartridge is capable of reaching temperatures that that peak cooling section this piece here was never designed to handle. So we go ahead and we get this taped up like that. And there you go. That is a ready to go upgraded Simi CNC stock hot end with a new style nozzle, a threaded thermistor, and a 40 watt heater cartridge. Enjoy guys.